guys just a few reminders before we get started first uh, your online homework number three chemical properties is due tonight and remember that your chapter one test will be on Monday okay guys we're gonna go ahead and start your test review um, remember a lot of definitions on this one so a good idea would be to um, uh, use some type of note card to study you know write the definition on one side the, the uh, answer on the other and kind of just look at your note cards and study note cards because uh, a lot of this test is just memorization now starting off with number one it says that chemistry is a natural science that deals with the study of and the correct answer should be C and it's the study of the composition structure properties and the change of matter now number two it says the branch of chem chemistry that identifies the composition of materials mm -hmm. is and the correct answer should be D analytical chemistry okay number three it says that an e example of an extensive property is uh, and the correct answer should be A mass remember extensive properties depend on the amount of matter that you have so obviously density it doesn't matter how much you have the density is always the same uh, color when we're looking at the color the color would be the same and then lastly boiling point would be the same as well okay number four it says an example of an element is and the correct answer uh, should be D which is oxygen we know that sugar soil and water are not uh, an example of an element is not made of just one type of atom and then number five it says an example of a heterogeneous mixture is and the correct answer should um, be C as well because in salt, salt's a compound, uh, nitrogen is an element, air we're looking through it and we can't uh, see the different particles in it uh, so the correct answer should be C. Alright guys moving on to number six uh, it says, which process is a chemical change? Uh, the correct answer that we should have gotten for that is C, um, because we see that burning uh, in air, uh, we know that heating to boiling, boiling, we don't change what it is, dissolving, we don't change what it is, and slicing up anything, we don't change what it is, but burning in air, we change the property of it, so therefore we change what it is, it's a chemical change. And number seven says water boils at 100 degrees Celsius is an example of, and the correct answer should be C, which is a physical property. And number eight says uh, every pure chemical compound consists of two or more elements, and then it's A, which are combined chemically. Okay, when we have a compound, remember they are always combined chemically. Okay guys, moving on to number nine. Now looking at number nine, it says, two properties that all matter has in common are mass and volume. So correct answers are number nine should be mass and volume. Number 10, it says in the periodic table, elements in the vertical columns together form, and the correct answer should be groups and families. So in number 10, the correct answer is groups and families. In number 11, it says a mixture that has the same proportions of components throughout is called. And the correct answer should be homogeneous. Okay, the correct answer is homogeneous. Okay, in number 12, it says that substances that are formed by a chemical change are called the and the correct answer should be products so the correct answer number 12 is products number 13 it says the element type that is a good conductor of electricity is a metal so number 13 the correct answer is metal number 14 it says the state of matter in which a material as a definite volume and a definite shape is the, and the correct answer should be solid state. So the correct answer for 14 is solid state. Number 15, 
It says elements are arranged in the periodic table according to their, and the correct answer should be chemical properties. Correct answer for 15 is chemical properties. And number 16, it says the smallest unit of an element that has the properties of that element is a, correct answer should be atom. 16 should be atom. Okay guys, moving on to number 17. Number 17 says when atoms of, of two or more elements are chemically bonded, the substance that is formed and the correct answer should be compound. So 17, the correct answer is compound. Number 18, it says if testing shows an element is a poor conductor of electricity, it is a nonmetal. So the correct answer for 18 is nonmetal. Number 19, it says a blend of two or more kinds of matter, each of which retains its own identity and properties, it is a, and the correct answer should be mixture. So number 19, the correct answer is mixture. Number 20 says if a material is tested and every sample has exactly the same properties and the same compositions, it is a, and the correct answer should be pure substance. So 20, the correct answer is pure substance. Number 21, it says blank research is carried out for the sake of increasing knowledge and the correct answer should be basic. Basic research is carried out for the sake of increasing knowledge. Number 22, it should be a metalloid is an element that has some characteristics of metals and some characteristics of nonmetals. So 22, the correct answer is metalloids. Moving on to 23 and 24. In 23 and 24, it says for each of the following chemical reactions, identify the reactant and the product. Remember that the arrow always points towards the product. So our product is going to be carbon dioxide in the first one. And our product in the second one is going to be mercury and oxygen. So that leaves for the other side, we see that our reactants are going to be carbon and oxygen. And in the second one, it's mercury to oxide. Okay guys, in 25 through 33, all we're doing is matching up um, the symbol with the element. Uh, so starting with 25, that would be F strontium. In 26, it is going to be G for chlorine. Number 27 is going to be C for cobalt. Number 28 is going to be A for silicon. 29 is going to be B for sodium. Um, and 30 is going to be I for copper. 31 is going to be D for iron. 32 is going to be H uh, for gold and 33 is going to be E for 10. And guys, all I did to look these up as I used the periodic table, which that's the yellow piece of paper that you get every time when you take a test. In 34 through 39, we are just labeling if it is a physical change or a chemical change. So melting an ice cube, we don't change ice from water, it's still H2O, so therefore it is physical. Um, where we have burning a piece of paper, once we burn that piece of paper it changes it into ash and we can't get it back so that would be chemical. Slicing a loaf of bread, we don't change it on the atomic level, it's still the same thing, it's still bread, just a smaller piece, that would be physical. Sharpening a pencil, again we're not changing it at the atomic level, uh, we're just taking parts of it off and making it smaller so therefore that would be physical as well. Uh, where we have the decomposition of mercury to oxide. You might not know what de or decomposition or decomposing. Uh, what that means is breaking apart. So we take mercury to oxide and break it into mercury and oxygen. So therefore we're changing what it is. It's chemical. And 39, uh, dissolving sugar and water. 
uh, that's making a mixture. Obviously, we're having a homogeneous mixture, so mixtures are always physically mixed, so it is a physical change. Okay, guys, moving on to 40, 41, and 42. Here we are talking about short answers. In number 40, explain, it says explain the differences between solid, liquid, and gaseous states in terms of the arrangement of the particles. Remember, we're looking at the atomic level on these. In a solid, uh, obviously we're looking at, they are the most closely packed together. They have a definite shape and a definite volume and they are very tightly squeezed together in the atomic level. In a liquid, remember we call liquids fluids because they can actually move. Uh, they have an indefinite uh, shape and a definite volume. Uh, so they can move at the atomic level, they flow, remember that's why we call them fluids. Um, and then lastly, the gaseous state, we know that they are have an indefinite shape and an indefinite volume, so they're moving all over the place, and at the atomic level, they aren't arranged in any way, shape, or form, and they're just bouncing all over the place uncontrollably. Now, in 41, it says contrast mixtures and pure substances. Remember, mixtures, we can break those up into homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures, uh, and mixtures are... Uh, either two or more atoms or two or more compounds or a compound and an element all in the same place but they still retain the properties of each individual uh, substance that's put in there. Now a pure substance, remember those are made up of elements and compounds. Uh, elements are made of only one type of atom and compounds are two atoms, two or more atoms that have been chemically bonded together. Um, in a pure substance, there's only an element or there's only a compound. There's nothing else with it. In 42, it says state the law of conservation of energy. Uh, remember, we said energy and mass, and we said that energy and mass can neither be created or destroyed. All the mass and energy that has been here has always been here, and uh, we can't create it or destroy it. Uh, we can only... Um, change the the way that we have it but again law of conservation mass of energy it can either be created or destroyed and moving on to 43 it says contrast heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures um, when we look at those guys remember that with our heterogeneous we can see the parts we can see the different parts that make it up uh, the homogeneous we can't um, heterogeneous, we use the examples of blood, granite. Um, we can see the parts within uh, those mixtures, but in a homogeneous mixture, we use an example of salt water, sugar water. Uh, we also use the copper two sulfate. In your notes, we looked at that, and you can't see any of the visible parts. They are just um, a solution mixed together. Okay, number 44, it said, how can you prove that water is a compound and not an element. Uh, the way that we could prove that water is a compound and not an element is that um, we can separate water, but when we separate it, we have to separate it chemically. We cannot separate it physically, uh, so we have to chemically break apart the hydrogen and the oxygen uh, to get two separate things. Uh, remember that uh, if we have an element, that it's only one thing and we can't be broken up into pieces because we only have one type of atom that's in there and water obviously is H2O and we can separate that chemically which makes it a compound. Alright guys that'll be it for the review uh, make sure that we finish our homework and everything for tonight and we study up for the test on Monday.